This is CNN Breaking News. First off, what is the meaning of the word typhoon? Some say that it came from the Cantonese term for big wind, while others say that it was derived from the Taiwanese term wind sifter. Actually, typhoon is a term used by people from the Northwest Pacific, hurricane is the term used in the Atlantic and Northeast Pacific, while cyclones are used in the South Pacific and Indian areas. In scientific terms, typhoon is a mature tropical cyclone that develops in the northwestern part of the Pacific Ocean. It moves in 118 to 239 kilometers per hour, associated with winds traveling at a maximum of 74 miles per hour. Heat release during this phenomenon is 6 by 10 to the 14th watts. To begin with, here are the requirements for the formation of typhoons. Number one, warm sea surface temperature. Number two, atmospheric instability. Number three, high humidity in lower to middle part of troposphere. Number four, Coriolis effect for low pressure center. Number five, low level focus or disturbance. And number six, low vertical wind shear. Now that it is all clear, let us head to the process. But first, typhoons are actually intensified tropical storms. The only difference between the two are its speed and the formation of the eye. For starters, you must understand this concept. Warm winds are associated with low pressure, while cool winds are associated with high pressure. Those two winds create convection currents. These convection currents mark the start of the formation of a storm. Going back, as the winds are over the ocean along the Earth's rotation and the occurrence of convection, it creates heat as the wind turbulence intensifies. Since heat is present, there is also low pressure. Those factors make evaporation of water from the ocean present and prominent in the whole process. In return, all the air that evaporates flow to the center of the storm, which is now a low-pressure vertex. The low-pressure vertex is the eye of the typhoon. The formation of the eye causes the circulation of wind to intensify, which creates strong winds and high waves on the ocean. When the storm reaches a higher speed, it now may be considered as a typhoon. To be precise, it is considered a typhoon if it reaches a speed of 118 km per hour. If it's less than 118 km per hour, but greater than 63 km per hour, it is only considered as a tropical storm. However, if it's greater than 239 km per hour, then it will be now a super typhoon. Given all that, you must keep in mind that the type of tropical cyclone does not indicate the level of damage it can cause. This is because the magnitude of its effect does not solely depend on its intensity of the cyclone, but also at the vulnerability of the area it affects. Breaking news. Ang isa pang epekto ng bagyong bano ay pagkasira ng mga gusali dito sa akin lukuran. Nagpapatrol sa Ilocos. Marta Aliado. We will now give you the effects of typhoons. Typhoons create heavy rain, which causes flood in low-lying areas or areas with clog-up drainage system. In the shore, however, storm surges are present. It causes infrastructures near the shore to be washed away and be damaged by the water from the ocean. It also creates disturbing strong winds which causes trees to collapse and high-rise buildings or weakly built infrastructures to be damaged. Rapidly, rotating columns of air in typhoons may also create tornadoes, which in return would cause severe damage on the area it hits. Overall, typhoons may lead to destruction of infrastructures and properties and agricultural lands. An indirect effect would price increase on the marketplaces. Breaking news. Dulot nga ng bagyong bano, kapansin-pansin ang pagtaas ng mga presyo ng mga bilihin. Tulad ng sayote, 
sibuyas, bawang at kamatis. Papa Troll Ariel Velasco.